Welcome to the Web Weekly Video Highlights. We're up to episode eight already and have a lot of great content to go through again and introduce you really quick and hopefully make you extra productive. So we're gonna cover a lot of cool things. ECMAScript 6 is getting a lot of news these days because it's getting closer and closer to getting officially approved and in some of the major browsers. So we're gonna talk about some cool ECMAScript 6 sites you can go to. We'll talk about Express 4 with Node.js and there's a really nice post I'm gonna show you that'll walk you through migrating from version three up to four. And we'll also talk about just some fun things along the way that I found related to JavaScript. So let's go ahead and jump right in. If you're like me, you probably enjoy keeping up with technology. For me, it's a personal hobby. I spend a lot of time researching technologies and one of those I've been spending a lot of time with is ECMAScript 6, the next version of JavaScript. Well, there's a really nice site if you're looking to learn about ECMAScript 6 out there and you can go over to es6fiddle.net and they have a little runtime kind of sandbox environment where you can try some things out. So one of the nice things is right out of the box they have a drop down and you can see there's a lot of samples on block scope and arrow functions and let's look at classes. So one of the new features that will be coming in ECMAScript 6 of course is support for classes. Thank goodness. I like the JavaScript patterns but there's better ways to do it for sure and this is one of those. So here's an example, they have a little polygon and they even show inheritance with ECMAScript 6. And what I really like about this is not only do they show you, but you can even run it and get the results down here in the bottom. And it lets you play around with some of these up and coming features. So it's a great way of, to get up to speed quickly if you want to learn more about ECMAScript 6. If you happen to be building applications with Node.js, then more than likely you're probably using Express for the web side of things. Or you might be using a framework that sits on top of Express. Well, recently we have Express 4.0 out and there's a great post at scotch.io by Chris Sevieja, and sorry Chris if I butchered your name there, hopefully that's right. But he walks through the process of migrating from Express 3 up to Express 4, some of the middleware changes and much more. And it's a really thorough post that makes it easy if you want to go ahead and update that package and get your app up and running. So check out that post if you're doing Node.js with Express. One of the coolest products I use frequently is Remote Desktop. Now normally I just pull up the Remote Desktop, whether it's on my Mac or on my PC, but there's a really cool project out there you can go to that actually builds a Remote Desktop client using AngularJS and Yeoman and some other stuff behind the scenes. Now in this particular post, it will walk you through all the different details on how to set this up. Now I'll have to admit, Connecting with AngularJS to a VNC client or whatever it may be or server is not something I'm probably going to do for just fun, but I thought it was a great read on how multiple technologies can be used together, including one of my favorite frameworks, AngularJS, and build an actual remote desktop type client. So they'll walk you through the architecture of it and all the technology to set this up and uh, get it going. There is some Node.js modules that are being used and then AngularJS is being used to communicate with uh, the back end there. So check it out if you're interested and want to actually walk through the process of building a remote desktop client with Angular and Yeoman. I recently came across a kind of fun post on JavaScript particle engines. And I'm not really one that does a lot with animations per se, so this kind of stuff always piques my interest. And there's a multi-part series on how you can actually use JavaScript to emit particles. Now, for me personally, I'm usually doing line of business apps, so I don't really need particles, but I still found it interesting to see the techniques that were used. So scrolling on down here, the post is gonna walk you through creating an actual particle object, and you can see we have things like speed, the life of the object, the size of the object, and all that. It then goes into emitting the particles. So there's some settings on the max and min life of each particle and how that all works. And then there's actual an emitter object as well. Now, if you go down towards the bottom here, you can actually run the code. So let me scroll on down. And here we go. So I'm going to hit rerun because I've already run it. And you can see a little particle engine going. Now, again, for me personally, I'm not really using particles per se. But I always learn a lot from some of the other objects and the way people structure their code, uh, the way they interact different modules together. And so I thought it was just a great post, a very easy to read write up on how you can build this type of functionality. So check it out if you want to learn about particles or maybe just the basics of how it works. 
I recently came across on Twitter a multi-line HTML JavaScript trick you can do, and quite honestly, it's a little bit hacky, and I retweeted it and even had people saying, why would you ever do that? Well, I'm going to include it in here anyway, just because I like to be a rebel. Uh, it's fun stuff, actually. Anytime you work with JavaScript, you'll usually have a scenario where you may have a little HTML that you need to embed. Now, I try to avoid that wherever possible by using templates or something like that on the client side. But you end up having a lot of pluses and a lot of quotes and you have to end it properly and all that. Well, this little multi-line trick, which is up on GitHub, and I'll include the URL uh, with this video, of course, will actually walk you through the process of getting a little multi-line module going. And what it allows you to do, and this could be used with Node, by the way, because this is a Node module, is call a multi-line function, but you actually embed the HTML as a comment. Now, if you use any minifiers out there, like Uglify.js or some others, that might ring a bell and you might say, whoa, wait a sec, isn't that going to get stripped out? Well, you can control that. In fact, this uh, down here will walk you through how you can actually go through and change things for Uglify or Clojure, the UE uh, compressor and others, and make it so it leaves it alone. Well, I don't think this is something I'm going to use every day. I do think it's a creative way of avoiding all the pluses and the quotes and the mess when you do need to embed a little bit of HTML into your JavaScript. I started off the video highlights by showing you the ES6 Fiddle site, and it provides a great way to get started with ECMAScript 6 and run it and kind of play around with it and see what you can do. Well, I'm going to end with one more ECMAScript 6 site. It's by Luke Hoban, and it's up on GitHub. And what Luke did is walks through a bunch of different samples of features that are available. So I really like it because you can kind of scroll through here and see a pretty rich set of samples. And so if you wanted to go in and learn about the new arrow functions coming, you can click on that, it'll take you right to it, and he has some samples here of what arrow functions look like and why you'd use them. So you'll get some of that functionality over in the ES Fiddle, but this is going to have more samples, and you can always cut and paste those over if you'd like. But I think it's a great way to learn. I personally learn a lot by just show me the code and I kind of can figure it out from there. So check that out if you're interested in ECMAScript 6. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Web Weekly video highlights. I hope you found some interesting concepts here, and definitely check out, we have, we're up to number eight now, so we have seven others that have content similar to this, and uh, pretty much everything in those others is still up to date as well, as far as technology goes. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time for episode nine. I'd like to thank Interface Technical Training for allowing me to use their studio to film this. I really appreciate that. And if you're interested in some of the live classes I teach, you can actually go to interfacett.com and you can get more information about our remote live technology. And this allows you to take a class on JavaScript or HTML5 or C Sharp or AngularJS online from anywhere in the world. And you'll have access to all the code and views that a student locally would have. Plus, you can actually see the instructor as well. It's a really cool experience. So I hope to see you online at some point, and thanks again for tuning in.